Hi, thanks for watching. I'm Paul Fantisi, and this is another edition of Higher Vibrations. Today's guest, folks, there he is. You all know who he is. That's Michael Bernard Beckwith. You've seen him on The Oprah Show, on Larry King. He's had his own PBS special. He has his own uh, radio show, and he is the founder of Agape International. And this show is going to be epic. It's going to be fantastic, and I can't wait to dig right in. Michael, thank you for being on the show. Paul, it's my joy to be with you and to be with you and touch all the people who are tuning in. It is absolutely my joy to, to do this kind of work play, as I call it. Fantastic. Before I start asking you a couple questions and digging into your knowledge, I want to share with you how this lined itself up. Uh, if I think back, I believe it was August or September. It was a Sunday morning, and I was doing a Facebook Live, as I often do. And when I do a Facebook Live, I do it for the followers and my friends and the, and the fans. And it's an open forum. It's questions, comments, and observations. So people chime in. If I have some experience to relate to, then we engage in a conversation. And right at the end of that chat that day, this girl, this gal, her name's Elizabeth Cantu, she popped in right at the end, and she started asking all the right questions. And I love people who ask the right questions because they're able people. They, right. they have the possibility to process something and to apply it. And those are my favorite types of people. And she started asking all the right questions. And then I ended the chat. And then she started messaging me on Facebook, telling me how she listened to some of my audios and meditations and had this really great awakening of herself and her presence. And then she said, okay, I'm off to Agape to see Michael Beckwith. And I just typed, okay, great. Tell him I said hi and that we should connect. And I let it go. And I went about my day. A couple hours later, she sends a video. Hi, I went, but there was a lot of people. I had on the wrong shoes, and she's excuse itising, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and as she's giving me all the reasons why she couldn't make a connection that I asked her to do, I'm looking at the video, and I'm like, no, you're an able person. You have what it takes. You got this. You can do it. And then I'm like yelling passionately at her at the video in my mind. And right. then I said, you just, I go, if your word is your bond, you will make it happen. And then I just went about my day. A couple hours later, I get video number two. I don't know what happened, but I had a feeling to go back. And I went back and here's some contact information for Michael. <laughs> and that's how this lined up. And I reached out to your office and I've been uh, communicating with Leah uh, for a few months now. Uh, so, you know, talk about unable to make things up. Right. You know, how the universe works when you have an intention and you let it go. Right. And you care, but not that much. That's when the possibilities manifest something fantastic like this. Would you agree? Absolutely. You, as soon as you had that intention, and you probably had some kind of uh, uh, telepathic communication with her as well on, her, on a soul level. And she was moved to go back, make the contact, give you the information. And what you did was let go. So you had no resistance to the universe unfolding in a proper way and pulling us together that we can be sitting each other, looking at each other's uh, shaved heads and smiling faces together. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Now I want to talk about intention and I want to get a little bit of your, your, your wisdom on it or your, how you apply it because I'm a huge fan and a huge proponent of intention and on all of my audios and meditations and videos, I tell the listener what the intention of the audio is because to me, if you know what the intention is, that allows the possibility for you to ride along that beam of energetic love and flow that's going to be right. coming out of uh, presenting out of me as I present the audio. Now, how do you apply intention? Because your, your magnetic power and attracting ability, it's, it's, it's mind blowing. Well, you share with well, us some, some, some secrets. Well, it's not really secrets, but I, 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 I often tell, say that most people on the planet are suffering from intention deficit disorder. They don't have intention at all. And so their, their, their day is governed by uh, being on someone else's agenda, whether it's the worry and the doubt and the fear of the world, uh, parental or societal or religious fantasies. They don't really have an intention, so they're just pulled away, pulled around as uh, the tail uh, wagging the dog, so to speak. So when we establish a vibrational intention, it's directional. In other words, once we have an intention, we're giving ourselves permission to move in a particular direction and to pull into our awareness inspiring thoughts from the universe. 
that's going to bring more, activate more potential within us. If we have no intention, basically we become a self-fulfilling prophecy of whatever the ills of the world are. If we establish an intention, then we are, are, as you know, we have many millions of thoughts in our head every single day. But the ones that stick are basically in vibrational harmony with our intention. So we, if we have an intention to have a magnificent day, to be of great service, an intention to unleash a dynamic prosperity and abundance and, and health and wholeness, if we have that as an intention, then the, the thoughts that emerge from infinite mind can galvanize themselves around that intention. And before we know it, we're actually thinking higher thoughts. We're obtaining it in consciousness. For you it basically are either obtaining thoughts from the sea of mental garbage, the, 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 the thoughts of separation, or you're obtaining thoughts from, of inspiration from the mind of the infinite. But your intention is the governor, governor there. If you have no intention, it's, 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 uh, it's a mess. You know, <laughs> your life becomes very, very messy without, without the multiple blessings as it possibly could be. Yeah. Right. Now, would you agree that, you know, someone may think that sounds fantastic, but how do, we, how do I apply an intention? And to me, how I apply an intention is I see the emotion of the listener all the way through to fruition. So I may see them kind of with a blank look in their face, kind of like if you're driving in traffic or at the supermarket, that haze. And then I picture people's eyes opening up, them looking around, them kind of smiling, them looking at one another. Then everyone is, comes together in a feeling of unity and self-love and respect. And when, when I do that, I, I get a beam, I get this internal buzz and that's, yeah. I feel it. And then that's the moment I press right. record. Right. So well, it's basically moment, just seeing the emotion all the way through to fruition. Would you agree or, or you, expand you, on that? Oh, absolutely. You are, uh, uh, it's the right use of your imagination. It's your, what I call re-engineering your imagination. And so that the, the imagination becomes an angel of God. We're actually seeing an outcome before it even happens. And then you said something very key, and that is you feel it. At the moment you feel it, then that feeling tone takes you beyond your imagination. Your imagination takes you to a point, puts you in a particular direction, and the feeling allows for the presence of infinite good to overflow the banks of your present paradigm. So it's more good than you can imagine. So you basically have re-engineered your imagination by establishing an intention and, and seeing it. And then the feeling takes you out of, of, of beyond what you can see. And that's very important. So you get to be, as I like to say, you get to be shocked and surprised at the, 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 the presence and how it shows up. It shocks you. It's, it's better than you can imagine. That's what you the feeling- You can't make it up. You can't make it up. It's just like, wow, I, I saw this happening, but it went mega. It went epic. And, and so it goes beyond your present paradigm. And I, that's where I'd like to live. I'd like for my present paradigm to, for to, be, to, to have an overflow beyond that. So that, and that brings growth and unfoldment. So I'm not the same person I was uh, yesterday or last year. I'm constantly becoming more and never less than my true self. So is living and talking through presence, like you often say, is that an intention or is that something combined with an intention? Well, I've heard you say that a lot. You talk through presence. Yes. What does, what does, that, what does that really mean? Well, when I talk about, I say that there, there's a presence that's never an absence. So the presence of love and of beauty and intelligence, some people will use the word God or life or source. It doesn't go anywhere. It's presence here now. And so I invite people to be in the presence and then the presence, which is infinite, begins to articulate and personify itself as our very life. So the presence does not come or go. You don't have to ask the presence to come here because the presence is infinite. So it can't, it's everywhere. We see in part, we see compartmentalized. Our perception can see a here and a there, but the presence there is no here and there. It's all here. And so our intention then opens us up to be consciously in the presence. Now miracles can happen. Now things that we can't control can happen. 
spontaneous goodness can happen through us and as us. So what you're saying is intention with presence opens up unlimited possibilities yes for people but the key is is when you set your intention now you become more aware of the people situations circumstances and events in life that are presenting themselves to you which open the doors to possibility is that right. am i my honor my offbeat with that you become more aware of infinite possibilities and then that that awareness shapes the circumstances, the people, the places, the things. What you need shows up. Even if you don't know you need it, uh, a door will open. Even if you didn't know a door was there. Uh, so your intention creates a feeling that then shapes circumstances. We're vibrational beings. So everything is vibration. And so when my vibration is lifted, then I become impervious to the lower vibrations of doubt and worry and fear and lack and scarcity. And I become available to the higher vibrations of love and joy, compassion, kindness, abundance. And I begin to participate in that world. The other world, I'm not participating anymore. I'm aware of that world, but I'm not influenced by that world. I'm aware of that world, but it doesn't touch me because my vibration is too high. So intention uh, takes you step by step by step to living in a higher vibration. And then circumstances change, they, and conditions change. You're not governed by them. You're governed by your intention. Which is connected to how you feel about yourself and how you feel about others, which yes. brings me to my next uh, little thing I would like to talk about. I've also, I've heard you say that you give to live until you live to give. Yes. Now, Absolutely. I say something very similar all the time. I'm saying it over and over again, and that's I create more value than what I ask for in exchange. And what that means, a lot of people think, oh, yes, he has hundreds of hours of audios and videos, and he lets me listen to them for free. He's creating more value than what he's asking for. Yes and no, but what that really means to me, and I want to ask how, what it means to you, I create more value than what I ask for in exchange. That means I'm giving my energetic support, encouragement, empathy, and love. And I'm offering that to anyone who wants to tug on it, feel it, and apply it in their life and, and experience the words that I use to describe what, what's going on. Um, it's really not so much about giving specific audios or, or videos. It's the energy yes. that we offer. Absolutely. You're, you're right on target. I, in one of my books, uh, Transcendence, uh, uh, and I have a CD of music, I have a statement in there that says, if you want to be in heaven, that you have to ask yourself, how can I bring value to everyone that I meet? So if I'm living to bring value rather than to get something from somebody, to use somebody, but I'm actually living to bring value, then I open myself up for the universal flow to express through me. I'm not trying to appease my acquisitive appetite I'm absolutely sharing. And the, the, the hands of the givers are never empty. They become, you become a larger space for more gifting to occur. So this is why I teach, you know, we give to live until we live to give. In the beginning, we give to live. We learn about giving. We learn about sharing. We learn how good it feels when we, when we share with other individuals, when we become uh, courageous enough to be a giver. And then something happens, and we actually find ourselves living to give. In the beginning, we're giving to live. And then a yeah. shift occurs, and we actually live to give. We actually wake up with the question, how can I give today? What can I share today? How can I give value today with anyone that I meet? Now, I am in vibrational harmony with the universe that is always giving. It doesn't have any withhold. The universal presence doesn't have a withhold button. It has unconditional love, which is a total givingness without any sense of withholding. So now I'm in league with the infinite. I'm a giver. And then what happens? More happens through me to give. I become, an, 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 I, I become a vehicle for giftedness. And what happens? I get to receive first what I'm giving. It has to flow through me. So I get blessed in my giving.
it's a, it's a heaven of a way to live. It is, absolutely. And, you know, I also say that's a lot to people. The law of attraction only responds to your feelings. It doesn't really care what you're thinking. It's your feelings first. And when your feelings are in alignment with who you are and you feel good about yourself, like-minded thoughts will automatically present themselves. That expands your attractive magnetic ability. So, and a lot of people say, well, how do I do that? Because, you know, a lot of people focus on what they don't want, what they don't have, and what they don't like. Then they wonder why on earth nothing ever fantastic presents itself to them. Right. And I tell them, hey, listen, this is what I do. Go to the supermarket. And next time you see a, a mom and a little baby, and the baby's being disruptive or pulling mac and cheese off the aisle, and the mom's stressing out, just see the, see the mom and the child hugging in your mind. See them laughing. Just see them, how you would want them to feel, and walk away. Right. And then three or four aisles later, observe that mom and that child. And you may be surprised that the right. tone became happy. Absolutely. And they don't, a lot of people, they're like, oh, can it be that easy? It is so easy. It's just becoming aware of your ability to influence others through your intention. And then when you see that other person or that parent hugging their child that was just yelling at them, would you agree that's going to allow you to feel good about yourself? That's going to give you more confidence. That confidence is going to give you more activity as the far as thoughts, and then the thoughts are going to feed your emotion, and then right. you're going to be in this self-perpetual energetic beam right. Absolutely. of greatness. Absolutely. And then in that moment, that's when the next logical step will present itself. So you don't have to think about what to do next or how to get something done. It's the feeling right. of already received right. that expands that. Yeah, you, you get moved into compelling right action. Now, even recent uh, uh, research from major universities has shown what happens on a chemistry level and on a biological level and a neurovegetative level and, and our nervous system level when we hold that kind of thought, when we witness something wonderful happening, when we are participating in something wonderful happening, our whole body chemistry changes. We immediately... In, uh, enhance our immune system. We immediately allow for tonic chemicals to start flowing through the body temple. There's an immediate slowing down of the aging process. There's immediately coherence that takes place at the brain function. And so that there's more creativity that occurs. So just on a biological level, you're blessed when you're able to hold that kind of thought or participate in some kind of altruism or some kind of generosity, whether it's thought, whether it's compassion, whether it's kindness, or whether it's generosity in form, it, it, there's an immediate change. And then if we live life that way, then that change not only includes the body temple, it begins to include the body of our affairs. Nothing comes into our experience uninvited. We either want it or we don't want it. And the law operates on what you're interested in. And so if you're interested in, not, for, if you're interested in something not happening, the universe doesn't know not. It just knows you're interested in that experience. And so we don't want to place our attention on what we don't want. We want to place our attention and our intention and our attention on our intention on what we really wish to experience in life, what we really w wish to manifest, what we really wish to participate in. Now, if that, as that is occurring, after a while, we kind of live there. That's where we live. And, and without even thinking at times, as you were indicating earlier, we carry a dynamic feeling tone of our intention and the course correspondence to the law of correspondence, the law of re 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 reciprocity, the law of vibration. Whew, we manifest with an ease and a grace and a power. It's fantastic. So anyone watching or listening to this right now, the most important thing that we've said up to this point was just to become aware of how you feel. And you want to really have your feelings influence your thoughts because that's how your vibration expands. And if, you're, if you think about how you feel and you're not feeling that good about something or a person or an event or something that you've gone through, just ask yourself, why do I feel this way? And ask yourself, why, why, and why? And it might be five times, 10 times, 15 times. But eventually, when you ask why, you're going to nail that down to an additional feeling. And then in that moment, we have the ability to take responsibility for it, to confront it, and to replace how we feel about it. 
that doesn't mean you have to figure it out. So it's not about understanding it, proving it, rationalizing, justificating anything that you've gone through. Just take a little responsibility and say, wow, I decided to become a physical being. My life is my responsibility. And then change how you feel about it. You don't have to go from upset to blissful. And if you can't think of anything, I often tell people, just, just say, I'm, I'm, I'm still alive. Right. And start there. Now, with that said, I want to switch gears a little bit to lucid dreaming. Ah. Because I've had many lucid dreams my whole life. I, I even had one last night. Then I want to ask you something about it. But last night, I was in a dream. And I was with you. We were in this kind of commercialized building, and it was huge. There was thousands of people, and you were standing on a concrete floor, and there was a garage door off to the left. And as you're talking, there's people coming down the street with all these goods, and the door would open, and people would drop a huge amount of clothes. The door would shut. Wow. The door would open. Food would come in. The door wow. would shut. Toys would come in. The door would shut. Water. And it was just a sea of people bringing you goods, wow. bringing you necessities for people. And I'm in the dream and I'm in the audience and I'm thinking, this is amazing. And then I, become a, I became aware that I was dreaming. I'm like, wait a second, I'm dreaming. And then I said, and I'm talking to him tomorrow. I'm like, how cool is this? And that was a moment of the dream. Um, just sharing that with you. But I know you're a huge fan and you lucid dream. But, and I heard you say more than once that in your lucid dreams, you get your inspiration to present. Yeah, I, I pick up a lot of my inspiration when I go to bed, when I sleep. I get messages, I get inspiration, I get feelings. I, I, I meet with people on the other side and, um, and, and get knowledge and, and information. It's a, it's, a, it's a real strong part of my, my practice. Sometimes I'll say, I don't want to do that tonight. I just want to sleep, you know. But oftentimes, you know, like two, three nights ago, uh, I dreamt I died. And I was at my own memorial service. And dancers were going down the, the aisle. And I died painless. They had a painless death. And I was told that basically I was going through a transition. I was going through another state of consciousness and it was going to be painless. I was expanding my awareness. So the old me was dying. Then the very next night, I met my mother on the other side. She's you know, passed over about four years ago. And we hugged and we embraced and she was giving me some knowledge, some information, told me she was with me during this transition because a lot of things have happened in, in, in the life of agape. You know, when that lucid dream that you had was very real because right now we are on concrete floors in a big, a big room because our, con our, our sanctuary was flooded by water. We had to pull up wow. the carpets. We had wow. to pull up the carpets. So right now it's concrete and, and people are bringing donations. They're bringing prayers. They're bringing what we need in order to restore the sanctuary and to build up uh, finances to to move eventually so you were picking up on some of that energy uh, wow. uh, about where we're at so you you were getting some some wonderful knowledge there yeah so, yeah. so matter of fact my my initial uh spiritual awakening as an adult that happened many 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 years ago happened in a lucid dream i was killed in a lucid dream and when i woke up i saw life differently I could see the beauty and the love everywhere. Everything was shining and glowing with uh, luminosity and brilliance. And, and I went on a research and development uh, project to understand what had happened to me. Because the individual that went to bed that night was not the same individual that woke up. I, in a lucid dream, I was killed and the old me died. And I began my conscious quest to do the work that I'm doing now. But it happened. It came to fruition in a lucid dream. So to me, that's just as real as the dream we're here. We're, we're now dreaming. Right. And most people are dreaming and they don't know they're dreaming. They think they're awake, but they're actually uh, dreaming somebody else's thought forms. They're dreaming uh, beliefs and perceptions that they did not uh, agree to. And they're living in that dream. And that's why we call spiritual uh, growth waking up. Because you're actually waking up from a dream of separation. 
and right. become more of yourself. And many of this happens, much of this happens in real lucid dreaming. Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever gone in a dream within a dream within a dream within a dream within a dream? Because I myself, I've gone four, five, six levels deep. And each time I wake up, I think I'm awake. And like you just said, I wake up, I brush my teeth, I make my coffee, I taste the coffee, I feel the heat of the coffee cup. In one of my last lucid dreams, I drove to Costco's and I <laughs> bought milk for my kids. And when I was at the register, I, you know, I've known the girl at Costco's for 20 years. I'm talking to her just like we're talking. And then when she scanned the milk, it turned green. And I looked and I said, wait a second. You're kidding me. I'm dreaming. I drove myself here. I got a bagel sandwich. What are, you, are you kidding me? I'm dreaming. Right. And then, boom, I shake and I wake myself up. And sometimes I'm one or two layers deep, but I've gone five, six, seven layers deep. It's taken, yeah. It seemed like it took me a, a hundred years to wake up sometimes. Right, right, right. You know, I, I dreamt recently. I was dreaming, but I, did, had, I, I had went to bed late that night. Some things had happened and my doorbell broke and I was up real late trying to fix it because it kept ringing. I knew it was like a supernatural kind of thing happening. And so I fell asleep and then I was in a dream. And then I became aware that I was dreaming. And then I became aware that I, that I hadn't got a lot of sleep I didn't, and I didn't want to wake up yet. So I was saying, please, alarm clock, don't go off yet. I still want to stay a little bit of a sleep. And while I was thinking that, I was also watching the other dream that I was in. So I was in like two or three layers, dreaming, wow. being aware I was dreaming, and then being aware that I wanted to stay asleep just a little while longer. <laughs> and then I got an extra 10 minutes before I actually woke up. But these are states of consciousness that after a while you become more and more awake. You know, many times I'll, I'll become awake and I'll actually practice meditation while I'm, while I'm sleeping. So I get extra moments of meditation. Sometimes I'll travel. I traveled one time and, and, and met some friends of mine who had made their transition. And one, one of my friends named Carol, she was very surprised to see me. She's, and she said, she was very shocked. I said, oh, no, no, I'm not dead. I'm, 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 I'm just visiting. I'm just dreaming. She said, oh, because we would have we been told if you were coming, you know. So I had these beautiful conversations wow. with some of my dearly departed and then uh, brought that information back and would speak about it. So it's a, after, if a person starts to keep a dream journal, they'll start to remember their dreams. And then as they start to wake up in their dreams, they can stay conscious and actually go to different places, visit places, get information, ask questions. And so it, it's not just uh, uh, sleeping, it's actually waking up while you're sleeping. And, and I, I often teach that just as when you're in that dream and you're able to say, I, I woke myself up, that's what meditation is. Mm -hmm. You go into meditation, you're actually saying, giving yourself a signal to wake up from this dream so that you see the infinite potential, the great possibilities that are hidden from your visible eye. You actually wake up in this dimension and see the infinite everywhere. So you can practice it in lucid dreaming and then you bring it to this reality through your meditation. Yeah, a friend of mine, a uh, fellow music mass mind artist, Huize, um, he's awakening at, at record lightning speed over the last few years. And he's actually at the point where when he becomes lucid in a dream, he consciously meditates while he's lucid. In That's the what I'm dream. talking about. Yeah. 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 And his experience are, are mind-numbing. And myself, I'm able to reach the astral world, we'll call it, uh, through a lucid dream. That's yes. when I, and I, like you said, I go and meet with people and learn things and gain, gain outside knowledge and, and wisdom. Do you have any specific technique or is there any affirmations or, or beliefs or that you apply to enter that lucid realm? Because I know a lot of people, they claim you can tap on your chest as you're falling asleep and there's a window, a portal. You can, you can actually um, watch your breath and make the, we talked about intention earlier and establish an intention that you're gonna remain conscious while you fall asleep. You watch your breath, it'll slow down, metabolism slows down, and you find yourself asleep but awake. And then you'll look around and perhaps look at your knee, look at your hand, 
and you can actually see, oh, I'm conscious, but I'm asleep. Now, once that happens, you're at choice. And so now you can either ask a question, you can travel somewhere, uh, you can meditate, you, you can, uh, you, you now are at choice to do some other things. In the beginning, it is always wise to do a, a short prayer and affirmation so you're not afraid. Now, with people, uh, sometimes people are afraid of what they're going to mm. see and that type of right. thing. The try. entities and the dark entities shadows and, and all that. Shadow people. And, right. Yeah, but yeah. I always remind people that we as spiritual beings are bigger than any entity we're going to run in. in control. We're, we're, we're bigger control. than any entity we're going to see. We're, 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 we have the whole universe within us. And so as you become accustomed to an awareness that all is well, that the universe is for you and not against you, it becomes a very peaceful encounter. And if you do find something that is disturbing, you become aware that you're bigger than that. And you, you actually start to feel that you're bigger than the issue, bigger than the entity. And... Uh, and then, you know, you can, all, you can always use those, that wonderful word. You can always say help, and the universe will help you. It'll be right there. It'll either wake you up or it will change the condition of the dream. Yeah. You just don't want to succumb to fear. What about in that moment, <clears throat> processing the possibility of kind of reaffirming to yourself with, well, let's talk about the word I am. Because there, it's amazingly powerful. I have a handful of meditations titled I Am, and they resonate and, and elicit people's emotions, and they move their soul like I've never seen before. And there's something, there's an emotional trigger, an unleash, unleashment, is that a word? But we're going <laughs> to use it anyway. Right, there's right, an right. Unleashment, an unleashment takes place. An unleashment occurs within that word I am. Can you share a little bit about what those words mean to you and how that those words have allowed you to continue to expand on who you're becoming? Because your vibrational intensity, it, you know, some people say, oh, when he walked into the room, could you feel it? When Michael Beckwith is within the same block, you feel it. <laughs> you feel him on Saturday if you're there. So... You know, you I use recently, those words, I am to self-empower yourself. And how do you kind of harness that and direct it and broadcast it in such a way where your energy and your love is felt instantly right. everywhere, all at once, all over the world, constantly? Because you, you, you are that magnet. You, you shape-shift the universe, my friend. Mm -hmm. You Thank move you. people emotionally. Thank and you, you move them through self-empowerment. And you give them the internal realization that they can become anything. Yes, yes. How do you, how do you, yeah. you are you, share with us. <laughs> you know, I always say that, I just recently did a talk and I, and I, one of the aspects was it the supreme affirmation. And I am is the supreme affirmation. When we're talking about the I am presence, we're talking about the full presence of love and beauty and intelligence that has configurated itself as us, as a unique expression of the, the, of the I am faculty. So we have to be guarded how we use that word. You can say, I am brilliant. I am divine love. I am perfect peace. I am infinite joy. I am unfolding abundance, ever increasing prosperity, pure joy. We want to place the, when we use the I am, we want to make sure that what follows the I am is something that we wish to demonstrate or experience. Now, if people are afraid of saying that, then I teach them they can possibly say, I am willing. I am willing to reveal the abundance, the poise, the confidence, the beauty, the power of the almighty presence. But, we, but, if, but if something else is there, like poor and sick and tired, we can say, you know, that's passing through but we don't identify with it. We don't say, I am sick. I am poor. No, 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 no. That's a, that's a, a, a affirmative, 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 right? It's a temporary thought form that's passing through. This too shall pass. I am an instrument of infinite joy and divine power and poise and confidence. So the I am presence is in the midst of us and we access it by the right use of I am. I am what thou art 
and thou art what I am. I am the presence and the presence is me. As the wave bears witness to the ocean and the ocean reveals itself as a wave, as the sunbeam bears witness to the sun and the sun reveals itself to the sunbeam, we bear witness to eternal life and life reveals itself as each and every one of us. There's no separation. Separation is only a figment of our imagination. It's the misuse of our imagination. So the I am brings us back to our real identity. And our life begins to bear witness to the eternal life of joy and intelligence and beauty and power according to our unique pattern. We are unique expressions of the infinite. This presence has never done cookie cutter. It does uniqueness. So everyone's needed, everyone's significant, everyone's important, everyone has a mandate to wake up and reflect and to reveal the cosmos in a way that only we can. I am, I am, I am. And I am able, we are able, we are worthy yes. as well. And yes. I just released a uh, new meditation a few days ago it's in 3D sound. It's really unique when you listen to it. I'm kind of everywhere all at once. And, uh, but it, the title is I Am Able. Yes. And I recorded thousands of affirmations in the affirmative able right. perspective. Right. And uh, th those words are fantastic. No, so we, got really, about, we got about 15 minutes left, but go ahead. And then we'll yeah, yeah, that, that, that's, another topic here. Yeah, yes, you're right on track there because I tell people to say, I am willing, I'm available. I am able. I am willing, I'm available, and I am able. Just get that in your mind. Let it roll over and over and over again. I'm willing, I'm available, I'm open, I'm able, I am able, I'm willing, I am open. And, and, and it creates a vibrational match. I'm willing to be more than I ever thought I could possibly be. I am able to do great and mighty things. I am able to demonstrate great and mighty things. There's nothing that can stop me. And then inertia becomes momentum. Vibration increases. Instant demonstration. Am I your doppelganger or are you my doppelganger? Because <laughs> we are like, we're, we are we're very much the same. We're vibrating. Absolutely. And if I was to tell you that, you know, I've, I've obsessed over all your material and memorized everything, that's simply not true. I've always appreciated the vibrational offering that you've allowed me to feel. Thank you. And that's what makes this special it, it really does now based with all, everything we've talked about now we're both huge proponents of music yes and we both we both bring music into what we present to people yes you know i have the meditations the videos the audios the trainings like yourself and then i also have the music mastermind radio network and i don't know if you've looked into it much but basically when you listen all the artists music that you'll hear they were all fans of one of my creations first. They reached out to me. And then I give them, I really lay into them with an intention chat. It's about mm -hmm. a two and a half hour schooling on specific magical details on how to harness broadcast and direct that intention. They right. then take that knowledge and when they apply it, then they create music. That's the music that we play on the radio network. So when people listen to it, the core intention is for the listener to feel better about themselves. Yes. And it resonates magically. It's growing and expanding. The artists are want in quicker than I can talk to them. But I don't let anyone, I don't play anyone's music until we have the intention chat first, because yes, then we're yes. all pulling from the same universal handle of, of intention. Now, you're a huge proponent of music. And when I've watched some of the clips from Agape that I want to talk about, and just watching the videos, I'm just, I'm moved two emotional right. tears I can't, right. I can't i can't wait to be front row or even up on stage with you to feel that but yes. that's talk to us about the influence that music has over you through your intention and how that expresses itself through through your your spiritual center from the very beginning even before i established agape as a spiritual center when I was doing my own seminars, my own transformationals, it was always undergirded by powerful music in which the music and the, and the lyrics matched my teaching. Because as we've been talking about, 
if you don't have that feeling, it don't mean a thing if you don't have that feeling. That's right. And music brings the feeling tone that is so necessary. Matter of fact, we created a group called the Feeling Tones here at Agape. And we too, uh, people can go to uh, agapemusic.com and listen to music 24 hours a day from some of the things you've seen on stage. And, and it's very important because it, it puts a person into a, a dynamic feeling tone. They become absolutely responsive. Uh, and when that feeling tone is hit from music, then they're receptive to more teaching, more knowledge, more availability. It opens the heart for the teachings to go in even deeper. So I, I don't do anything without music. I use music in my meditation retreats. I use music in my seminars, in my conferences. I, obviously, I use, use music in my services on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings. Uh, I listen to music in my car on the way here, you know, but it's a certain kind of music. Mm -hmm. Because everything that's called music isn't music. You know, right. music is that which harmonizes the hemispheres of the brain. Music is that which uh, uh, allows for the blood to flow more coherently. Music allows for the nervous system to acclimate itself to a higher level of joy. There are some things that are noise, and there are some things that is music, that are music. And music, it, it washes over you, and it absolutely can heal, educate, transform, inspire. It's extremely important. Every great movement has had music behind it and that inspired the individuals to take action. So, By eliciting the emotion. Yeah. Right. Because no one's really going to remember what you say. They're never going to forget how you made them feel. Absolutely. That's and a great, you, uh, Maya Angelou used to say that all the time. They'll never you, forget. Never forget. And when you can create music with that, it permeates. Like I often say, people will feel where you're coming from infinitely faster than they'll try to understand or process what you just said. Absolutely. Like the words really, the words have power and the words have weight, absolutely. But when your intention is defined, that vibration permeates all the words, space. The words carry a vibration. Like we're, oftentimes when I'm teaching, I'm actually giving a transmission. And it's the transmission under my words that are more important than the words. And that's how music operates. It's, it's that music is like some people have the lyrics, but they don't have the music. <laughs> and so there's no vibrational match there. You have to have the music of the soul. And, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I have great respect for artists uh, at that level because they're going beyond 3D. They're going into fourth, fifth, sixth dimensions and pulling in the sacred celestial sounds and becoming an instrument to those, for those compositions to transform lives. So I have utter respect for the musicians that I know and the artists and the singers and the dancers even uh, that are able to uh, replicate these, uh, the, the spiritual uh, sacred geometry in movement to the music. It's all very, very powerful, very powerful. To the yeah, so powerful. And uh, you know, myself, I was never a music guy. I never really could understand the song or the lyrics. And then uh, about a year after I started creating these meditations a few years back, people started asking me, do you have anything I can listen to during the day? Because I have two jobs. I got three kids. When I get home, I'm tired. I try to meditate. I fall asleep and, and you know, I'm too tired. I said, oh, I'll just make music. Well, that, that's not me. <laughs> so, you know, I said to the universe one day, I said, I'll just use the law of attraction. And I said, hey, universe, hey, listen. I want to associate with people who are listening and benefiting to my audios and videos that just happen to be musically inclined. That was my, my, my intention, my broadcast. Then I let it go. And I started getting these emails from this fella down south. And he's telling me about his, his awakening, his lucid dreaming, his self-awareness, and his, his you know, evolvement. Right. And then it was a few emails deep. I said, hey, so what do you do for work? He goes, uh, I'm a singer-songwriter. You know, <laughs> the whole time. I said, send me some of your work. And he sent it. And it was brilliantly done, a little aggressive, a little explicit to the direction I wanted to tug on. But I thought, you know, if because I apply an intention to everything I do before I press record. And then whatever I create is perfect. I never think about or double do, double take or do it again. I, however, it comes out is perfect. Right. And uh, I thought if I could share this intention thing with him, it's, it must be duplicatable. And if he applies it, then the listener will 
get a similar feel good feeling that I seem to be generating. And he created the first song. We put it on YouTube within three days. It was listened and downloaded to every country in the world. Wow. And the comments, you move me emotionally. You give me aha moments. I've never cried tears of joy, self gratification, acceptance. You can't just, you can't make this stuff up. Wow. And uh, that's how that Paul Santisi music mastermind thing began. And now we're up to almost 40 artists, 300 songs, 20 hours of music. I got to send you some of my music. Yes, that's what I'm alluding to. Right. I'm dropping the little seeds here on you. Done deal. I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you my transcendence music. It's I me. Will put the whole thing in and it will, you, I'll add you right into the mix, my friend. Done, done deal. Fantastic. Done deal. Done. It's called Transcendence. I have nine, I have nine tracks. Uh, some of them are meditative and some of them I'm, 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 I'm rapping on top of music in a very powerful, coherent way. It's, it's very uplifting. People use it in their dance studios. They use it in their exercise and they use it for meditation. Fantastic. Now, let me ask you this. Do you think you could kind of sneak in uh, one of your wife's songs that I heard earlier in the land I'll of I am? I'll sneak in a, a whole CD if you want. <laughs> We play 24 seven. I will add whatever you want into the mix. We'll attach DJ drops. We'll do sweeps. We'll let everyone know. Very good. So do you want the CD in the land of I am? You want that one? You can send the CD digitally or mail it. However, I can just take the right. copies. off. I'll, I'll let you work that out with Lee. Fantastic. What are we doing for time? We got to keep this about an hour here. Okay. So we're about eight minutes left. Anything off the hip, off the cuff that we didn't cover that you like to talk about and, and present that you can share with us. And where, where would you like people to go to learn more about you? Is it Agape Live? Is it? Yeah, absolutely. What, what, what websites? We're going to have something up on the screen here by now anyway. But if you could just give us a little. Well, you know, basically people can live stream my Wednesday evening services and they can live stream my Sunday services at agapelive.com. I've been sharing your uh, Sunday um, services the last few weeks. On well, there you go. And so that's live. They can go into the archive and watch as well. They can go to michaelbernardbeckwith.com on my personal website that's being upgraded as well. And uh, just participate in the community any way that they want. Fantastic. All right, any closing I wanna, remarks? I want to uh, thank you for this gift. Oh, what's that? The Paul Santisi energy coin. That's right. There you go. You're welcome. Thank you so much. I got it right here on my desk. Yeah, so it's so a live stream and then uh, Facebook Live. We're doing Facebook Live as well on the services. So they can come that way. And then, you know, I'm, 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 I'm in the process now of doing a, a meditation class that's being live streamed. This one might be a little bit too late for them to join. But if they go to the website, they can see my next classes that I'm going to do live stream. And then I'm having a, I have, I have two meditation retreats that I do every year. I do one at the end of the year. And then I'm doing a spring meditation retreat. It'll be on the website at agapilive.com. And they can uh, participate in that as well. People come in from all around the world to have me uh, mentor them in meditation. So that's another way that they can participate. It's a, it's, a, it's a powerful, diverse, inclusive community of individuals that are ready to celebrate the divine presence, establishing an intention to become more and never less than their true self. And so when you get that kind of harmonic happening, like in your lucid dream, when you came uh, in your lucid dream and saw the sanctuary, but you noticed there was no carpet on the floor, you were actually coming into our place here. That's temporarily has no carpet because of the uh, water baptism we just went through. But people come in, they gather from all around the world. Agape wow. is kind of a, a destination point. People book their vacations around uh, coming uh, to metaphysical Mecca. And, and, and participate with us in a very powerful and dynamic way. So hopefully, I'll see you here one day. Sure, I'm on my way. And uh, <laughs> for everyone watching or listening to this right now, you don't show the concrete floor on your live stream footage, right? No, so there because is no they're way. showing me and they're showing this person who's singing, sometimes a panning of the audience, but they're not pointing down so to There the is floor. no way that I would know. Yeah. So there, no, you, was you a, got, there was a pretty cool, can, I, I swear, I, I'm your doppelganger or you're mine. It's, it's <laughs> one, of the, one of the two. I'll yeah. leave that up to you to, to decide and, uh, <laughs> and relish in. <laughs> We're pulling from the same source, Paul. I'm excited. 
All right, listen, my friend, we're out of time. I want to thank you. This was probably the most enlightening, energetic, soul-expanding, vibration-raising, blood-pumping hour that I've ever had with any other human being. And that's not to discredit any of the amazing mentors I have in my life. But I can't even put words on this moment right now. So I truly want to thank you. And I look forward to doing this again because we just scratched the scratch of the surface. Right. We just scratched the surface. Just, oh, we just did just a, a small covering of, of what's in store. So I look forward to doing more of these again in the future when, when it lines up. Well, thank you for the invitation. And we thank that woman who went back into the uh, Elizabeth Cantu. Yes, the, big props to Elizabeth. The contact information from uh, Lee and Jacqueline. And we appreciate how that works. And we appreciate this moment in which we get to share with all of these beings that they have so much potential, so much possibility, and that they're not an accident, that they are on purpose from the universal presence, and that they're here to unleash, to go into a period of unleashment <laughs> and set themselves free. And so I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely overjoyed to be with you and to be a part of this vibration that's going all around the globe. And so thank you for the invitation. You're welcome, my friend. Thank you. And until next time, keep being you and keep being great. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.